Ahead on the season finale of Early Birds, we'll take a look back and a look at what's to come for the Falcons. Desmond Ritter might be a big part of Atlanta's future. We're going deep with the rookie QB. Then we'll crunch the numbers of the NFL draft order. Plus, we'll get you ready for the Dogs and the Frogs with a national title on the line. That and more ahead on Early Birds. Grab a cup of your favorite Joe and let's talk Falcons football on Early Birds. Presented by Mercedes Benz. Oh, good morning and welcome into the season finale of Early Bird Shock. You're going to miss seeing me every Saturday morning? Every single Saturday morning, I'm going to miss you, brother. I'll, st I'll just stop by the house. I'll bring donuts. Don't worry about it. Let's get things started with the opening drive. Falcons and Buccaneers tomorrow here on Fox 5. So, Shock, I'll start with the big question. Is Desmond Ritter the quarterback of the future? We're not going to figure it out right now. Falcons, though, they're going to have a high first-round draft pick. So, DJ, my question is, what goes into making that decision if Ritter's the guy or not? You know what, Justin? I think there are a lot of things that go into account when you think about, can this guy lead our team, lead our organization? Organization. And still, you think about he's missing one of the best players in Kyle Pitts, so you don't know what that relationship's like. He hasn't had a full season. In this last ball game, you may not be going against the top quality competition, but the best thing to know is over the last two games, he has continued to improve. So that's a positive step in the right direction if you're thinking about Ritter being your guy going into next season. Here's a little bit more about the rookie quarterback. Just give me what they take me, you know, not forcing it, not trying to do too much. Uh, just going out there and, you know, playing my game and, and being loose and free. And for us to come back, you know, whenever we come back in April, June, July, um, to look back and say, okay, how did we finish last season? Did we finish it on a high note or a low note? Um, you know, if we finish it on a high note, um, obviously everyone's going to be feeling good and, and, you know, juiced up to, to get back to it. All right, as we continue on in the opening drive, we'll put quarterback aside for a moment because that's just one roster decision of many for Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot. You got right tackle Caleb McGarry, leading tackler Rashawn Evans, Lorenzo Carter, on and on players whose contracts are up this year and shock there could be a lot of change in the next few months yeah no doubt about it you, you're talking about all these guys who are on one year deals and that's the most important thing is do these guys come back do you bring some of those guys back as well as your your rookies played this year do they play a bigger role but then you think about they're going to have a lot of money in cap space so there's going to be a lot of new faces a part of this team and it's going to be interesting to see how this changeover for this team happens next season and here's arthur smith on how he views the falcons transition from last year headed into this this offseason. This year it was, it was a lot younger team and uh, we made kind of a second transition. So I think you're seeing more of the foundation now, Jeff. Guys after two years and there'll be a lot of things that open up that we haven't had in the offseason. Things that we got to strategically uh, plan ahead, and which we have. and It'll certainly be different going into this year than in, in any other offseason we've had. But we feel the foundation strong, the habits, uh, a lot of the young guys we've invested in. I think all that stuff's been positive. And as we wrap up the opening drive, the Falcons are going to finish this season with either six or seven wins. OK, that's a far cry from people saying they were only going to win two or three before the year. But we also all know what could have been some of those close losses. So DJ, whatever happens tomorrow, do you feel like this season was a success? I say a resounding yes. And it goes back to what we just talked about. So many guys on one year deal. So many mm -hmm. rookies playing this year. And then you got Arthur Smith in the second season getting these guys playing to a higher level. And everybody thought it would be two wins and had a pretty tough schedule here throughout the year and was able to get to this point. And you mentioned it. There were a lot of times where they could have won those games that they lost being in every single ball game except for the Cincinnati game. This this was a Falcons team that played really hard this season. We'll see if they can end on an even higher note tomorrow. We'll welcome into Early Birds alongside DJ Shockley. I'm Justin Felder, and let's pick up that last point. So you said you feel like the season is a success. What's the next step? Will it be playoffs or bust? I think so. I think you got to get to that next level, which is playing in the playoffs. You think you're, you were almost good enough to be in there this year with yeah. the losses you had. So I think absolutely this is a season where, hey, next year, it's all about the playoffs. Well, Shock, we are leaving ground. Will things ever be the same again? It is the final countdown to the final film room. Bars, that's all I'm talking about. I love it, Jim. Last show of the year, I don't know, final yeah, count. I, I thought it. it worked. But first, only <laughs> appropriate, our final sit-down interview of the year is with the longest tenured member of the Falcons. Been quite a ninth season in the NFL for Jake Matthews, which included a mad dash to a game after being there with his wife as they had their first child. Matthews, also a guy that we know in the locker room, is always open and honest about the only NFL team that he's played for. He spoke one-on-one -on -one with our Victor Prieto this week. 
Now you're looking at, you're staying at this Sunday, 144 consecutive starts, and you would tie uh, Todd McClure for second in franchise history. First off, um, do you remember the last time you didn't start a football game? Uh, week two of 2014, I had a high ankle sprain, my first start in my left ankle, went in at halftime, missed the second week at Cincinnati, and then haven't missed since, so. What's that like? What's that mean to you to be able to play basically every single game you've been in in as Atlanta Falcon? Yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty amazing. It's hard to take credit for it. I mean, honestly, the good Lord kind of blessed me with a body that can take a beating. I'm, I'm working just as hard as the rest of the guys and doing the same stuff they're doing, but it's humbling too. It also, a little surreal, it makes me feel old. I can't believe I'm <laughs> setting records for consecutive games here. I, there's sometimes I feel like I just got here. And, and you guys have just been all sorts of good this season. I mean, you're one of the top ranked O-lines in the NFL. What was it about this year that you guys just were able to click? You know, when Art first got here, he we had all the same, you know, fundamentals and things we wanted to bring to this offense and as a team. And um, I think just going into the second year and, and really understanding the scheme, exactly what we were looking for on plays and how we wanted things to look, um, you know, everyone bought in. And it, it's hard to come out every Wednesday and practice hard and do things the right way. And we, we've made a commit, commitment as a group that, you know, we're, we're, we're going to continue to push ourselves. And we haven't taken days off. And I think all that work and chipping away, it, it's, it's added up and, you know, thankfully carried over in the games. And when you're walking off that field and the clock hits zero, how do you assess how, how this season went? I think some of the stuff you mentioned, the statistics of how we've improved as an offensive line, just speaking in regards to that, you know, I think Algier is getting close to hitting a thousand yards on the year, so that would be, you know, pretty amazing. And you try to, you know, take some of the good, but at the same time, there, we're going to find plenty we need to fix. And that's the same every year. If that, you know, if you're not feeling that, it's probably time for you to retire. So we, we'll have plenty to work on this offseason, and, um, you know, hopefully we'll keep trending up like we have. It's time to get some game intel from Shock. You're invited into the film room. So cut the lights and let's get started. Just heard Jake Matthews talking right there, and he talked about this offense on how good they're playing. Algier is close to 1,000 yards. But they're the details and the things they do in the run game that helps this offense be so successful. And let's jump into it. Now, this is the fourth and one call from the last ball game. And watch this motion. This motion is very critical. By this motion, him going across, it forces these linebackers to bump over. Now, that's important because Caleb McGarry, your right tackle, has to get all the way over here to seal block this linebacker. And without this motion, he would stay here and it'd be hard to get to that block. So you're going to get a reach block on the outside here. Then you're going to get a double team on this guy. And the second most important block is our pro bowler here. He has to seal this guy right here who's already on the inside. So you see the most of them come across. Now you see these guys jump over. Here's the nice block here. Here's the double team coming off the edge here. And you see Lindstrom get around and get his butt turned this way. So he forces this hole and now the next biggest block is Caleb McGarry going around and sealing this guy here on the on the outside on that second level which gives Algier the opportunity to run right through this middle. Look how big that hole is. Nice job of crease blocks and nice job of these guys doing a great job on a second level. This is what it's all about for this Falcons offensive line. They done such a great job all year of pushing the line of scrimmage and now you're looking at a bat in Algier Justin who's looking to get a thousand yards in the last game. And Shock, how about Chris Lindstrom? Looked like he took three steps before the defender was even out of his stance. No doubt. Shock, more to come in a bit. We are two days from Georgia playing for their second straight national title. We have promised to be nice to our resident Ohio State Buckeye after the break. Plus. For me, it's all about, um, you know, you got to be able to, to think fast, but also think slow. Desmond Ritter has a lot more on his plate than just perfect passes. He will break it down next in Going Deep. Hey, Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. Early Birds is presented by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. And brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Truist, committed to a better future. And by Home Depot, how doers get more done. Welcome back to Early Birds. It's time to switch gears and talk a little college ball. Brought to you by Truist. 
beat BNT and SunTrust are now truest. Here again is Fox 5's Justin Felder. Well, welcome back into Early Birds. We welcome in former Falcons and Ohio State wide receiver Michael Jenkins. Jenk, we, we, DJ promised to be nice. We kept him in the other studio so we can ask you, how you doing a week after? I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> Obviously, we wanted to win, uh, but I think we earned a lot of respect from oh, the yeah. Georgia fans and, and the, the job that Coach Day and C.J. Stroud did in that game. So we gave them all we could have yep. and, uh, you know, just didn't make enough plays to win. I know you were there, and I'll say that. In the Peach Bowl, Georgia Ohio State instant classic. What were your big takeaways from that game? And you said, hey, respect for your Buckeyes, and Georgia gets challenged. Yeah, I think we saw the depth of Georgia because, mm -hmm. we, you know, we, we kind of shut down Jalen Carter. We kind of shut down Brock Bowers a little bit, yep. you know, McConkie didn't really do anything, but the other receivers, you know, Smith, yeah. and Jackson, and Mitchell, and those guys stepped up and make big plays, and I think that's positive for Georgia fans and this team going forward to see those guys playing big. Certainly have to feel better on the mm -hmm. offense, and especially if they can get guys like Darnell Washington back. All right, let's mm -hmm. talk about the national championship game, Georgia and TCU. We're going to go deep on it. We'll start with when Georgia is uh, talking about TCU a little bit in this one. Mm -hmm. They gave up 45 points. Excuse me. They gave up some points to Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Does that give you some worry if you're a Dogs fan before they take on TCU? A little bit. Um, you know, I think Georgia sh struggles a little bit with mobile quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. and Max Duggan, we all know that he can run the, run the ball and make plays with his feet. So they're going to have to really contain him, keep him in the pocket, and make him throw, hopefully not to Quentin Johnson, who is a, a special talent on the outside. Right, but does getting tested, does that give him a load? They've got the experience, but does that make him feel better uh, confidence-wise? I think Kirby's doing a good job of making sure these guys get past this Ohio State game and you realize, hey, we have a chance to go back-to-back -back and we need to re refocus and do what we do as dogs. Dogs sound focused to us. Take a listen. Did not play our best football game. A lot of that had to do with Ohio State. Um, I have a lot of respect for them. I have a lot of respect for these players that are on this podium with me and the ones in the locker room. And if we want any chance of winning a national championship, we have to play a lot better football. Okay, other side of things. I remember I was at the Benz last week. Every time TCU scored against your buddies from Michigan, <laughs> all your Ohio State fans went yeah. crazy. But that was a big upset. A lot of people learned a little bit more about TCU. What did you learn about the Horned Frogs? I mean, those guys are gritty. I mean, every mm -hmm. game has been close this season, and they've earned the right to be able to play for a national championship. So with a, a Heisman um, finalist in Max Duggan, Quentin Johnson on the outside, a Thorpe winner, the best DB in the country, and Tomlinson on the other side, they have the players to, to have the right to be in this game. As exciting as the people Beach Bowl was, this one was just as good here, the Cinderella Horn Frogs. It's up to us to, to prove those guys wrong, um, and it still is. I mean, that's just the way it is. And then when this season ends, you know, the bigger challenge now is how are we going to react to being, you know, kind of the favorite? How are we going to react to having that um, target on our chest? Our Zaxby's indescribably good game of the week. We thought long and hard about this one. We're going to go with Georgia and TCU, of course. Monday night national championship game. It should be fun. And Jake, I got to tell you, awesome being with you on the college football hey, segments it, all season long. Loved it. You did a great job. Great insight. And DJ, you've been nice all day. We'll send it over to you. Just, just keep it civil. <laughs> Jake sees my smile. He knows everything <laughs> I'm thinking. Jake, great game, man. No doubt. All right, there's a lot that goes on in the mind of a quarterback before the ball is snapped. It doesn't just end there either for gunslingers. They have to go through all their progressions as well before throwing the rock. Now, Desmond Ritter has has his own process for that. He explains that this one's going deep. When you know when you're in a game, I'm obviously not out there giving the head bob or anything. Um, but you know, you just see a subtle reset with your feet. Um, you know, whether it's kind of across the board or whatever it may be. Uh, but you know, you usually see that with your feet and your hips, and, and then your shoulders come after. Um, but you know, a lot of the times we like to call it, you know, a sprinkler head on some reads where you kind of just you know right across the board. And sometimes you just get up there and it's just you know run the play and run the play. Um, you know, sometimes it's a pass, sometimes it's a run, but it's just get up there and go. Um, and so, you know, for me, it's all about, um, you know, you got to be able to, to think fast, but also think slow. Um, and, and have your body move fast, but also have it move slow at the same time. So there's an equal balance to it all with the mind and the body um, and keeping everything kind of calm and cool, but also speed it up at the same time. Well, the Falcons could, could maybe think quarterback again in the draft this year, but where will they be picking? Miles and Victor will break it all down ahead on Early Birds. You're watching Early Birds, presented by Mercedes-Benz, on your official home for Falcons football, Fox 5 Atlanta. 
Well, it's something no football fan ever wants to see. A player having to leave a stadium and go to a hospital. Of course, we were all watching last weekend as that happened in the game involving the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals. Should that ever happen involving the Atlanta Falcons, the team certainly has a plan, and that's the focus of this week's Emory Road to Recovery. We utilize Grady, um, being a level one trauma center, being a premier hospital to evaluate and take care of anything that could come through their door, and then also being affiliated with Emory, um, so we have a relationship with them. And so we have staff that are here, um, EMS staff that are here full time to help us um, with a player who may need to go to Grady. And that's both for the visiting team and for our home team, because we're you know, appropriately uh, responsible for both. And we have um, visiting uh, team doctor, what's called a visiting team medical liaison, or we call them the VTML. And they are affiliated with Grady, and so they can help with both teams. We have an ambulance on site. So like I said, God forbid we have to go to the hospital, we're going to the hospital. Somebody from my staff will go, one of the doctors from my staff will go along with the athlete. One of our training staff will go along with the athlete. Um, the VTML will go along with the athlete and then the EMS personnel will go along with the athlete. And then we have Grady doctors who are here to help coordinate uh, that athlete getting in. All right, thanks, Doc. The Falcons will know where they are picking in the NFL draft after tomorrow. We'll take a look at the possibilities next on Early Birds. Early Birds has been presented to you by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. All right, time for our play of the day presented by Lucra, the new friendly competition app. Shock the question. Tyler Algier has exactly 900 rushing yards on the season. Can he get 100 or more tomorrow to crack 1,000? Ooh, Justin, I think so. He's been around 80, 90 every single game. I think he does it and gets the 1,000. You heard Jake Matthews. They want to do it for him. If you want to compete head-to-head -head with your friends, just scan the QR code on your screen. Well, barring a trade, the Falcons are all but certain to make a third straight top 10 pick in the NFL draft. And, Shock, we know that's not where they want to be, right? No. It's where they are right now, though. <laughs> Might as well make the most of it in the meantime. Still some possibilities to sort out before we get the exact draft order. Miles and Victor broke out the calculator to explain. Justin, DJ, NFL Draft coming up just a few short months away. Let's talk draft positioning for the Dirty Birds. We saw the impact they had on offense from these rookies. Same thing happened on defense as well. Three starters at this point in the season. So we're going to bring in our Victor Prieto to talk about draft positioning for this year should the Falcons win or lose on Sunday. Victor. Well, Miles, it comes down to this week, right? The Falcons against the Bucks. So right now the Falcons are in a three-way tie with the Raiders and the Panthers all standing at 6-10. and 10. So the Falcons, in terms of Draft-wise can fall anywhere between the sixth pick and the ninth pick. There's another team, the, too. The fourth team entering that fray, the LA Rams, who sit just above them at 5-11. and 11. Now, that's there's a whole lot of things to consider here, including strength of schedule, right? Oh, yeah. So the tiebreaker between all these teams is opponent strength of schedule. So you're looking for the weaker number or smaller number. So as you can see, the Falcons actually are currently leading, but it is so close, 0.4%, that it really has potential to change. So here's the result. The Falcons lose to the Buccaneers. What happens? for their draft order. Well, the Falcons lose, then it's going to come down to the Rams matchup. The Rams beat the Seahawks. They will put themselves in that best situation to finish with that sixth pick. But something else could happen too, right? That's right. If the Rams lose to the Seahawks, then they'll stay at where they are currently projected, which is the seventh pick. Okay, so let's talk good things. The Falcons finally beat Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. What does that do for their draft? It probably goes a little bit farther back, right? That's right. Well, the Falcons, they pull it off and close out the season with the win against the Bucs, then it comes down to the Raiders and the Panthers games. So if either the Raiders or the Panthers lose, the Falcons will fall into that eighth slot. But if that or changes to an and, and both the Raiders and Panthers lose, then they get to that ninth pick. So that would be the worst case scenario in terms of the Falcons draft. So not the worst thing in the world to have the ninth overall pick if you win on a bad consolation prize, guys. 
Guys, Miles and Victor, well done. And Shock, we want to take a moment and say those two guys that you just saw right there, they do so much great work on this show, our other Falcons programming, as well as our excellent studio crew here at Fox 5. DJ, we appreciate them so much. Absolutely. We are blessed with the best crew, no doubt about it. Everybody works hard, and we have put on a great show all year. So kudos to everybody. And a lot to look forward to next year. Shock, been another good season. You looking forward to some downtime, or are you focused on the dogs? Justin, you know, I'm going to L.A., baby. Let's go. All right. Dog. Enjoy that trip. I'll be out there with you. That's it for another season here on Early Birds. For DJ Shockley, I'm Justin Felder. Have a good morning and a great rest of your weekend.